What is up, everybody? Welcome to Sales Stories in Real Life, Episode 3, the show where professional salespeople share their experiences on times that they themselves were sold. Today, we have a very special guest. She is the Chief Evangelist for Challenger, Inc., an individual contributor for 18 years started her career at Corporate Executive Board, which was eventually acquired by Gartner, and then the Challenger business spun off from that. She's also the host of the weekly Winning the Challenger Sale podcast. Welcome to the show, Jen Allen. I hear that you were recently doing some home remodeling and had some juicy takeaways from. What uh, what happened there, Jen? Yeah. So first of all, just let me say, I love the premise of this show because I love being sold to like many of us in sales. So yes, we were having some home remodeling done because um, in 2021, I moved in with my now fiance. I was living in Chicago, downtown in my own condo. I, would, I already renovated it. It was perfect, beautiful, everything I wanted, but he has kids. So it didn't make any sense for them to move to me. So I came out to Arlington Heights in the suburbs of Chicago now he has an amazing home, lots of bedrooms, great location. The structure is great, but it's never been updated or renovated. So we sought out to say, hey, we want to look at our master bedroom and bath. We want to look at the kids' bath. We want to look at the kitchen and the living room. And then we want to figure out how we can get all that done for a reasonable price in a reasonable time frame. So like many of us do, we reached out to three contractors to try to get an idea of what it was going to cost, what it was going to look like, how much time it was going to take. And then in the process of doing that, um, his family member actually reached out to him and said, hey, we had some work done with someone else. You should consider them as well. So all in, four contractors. So we had each of them come to the house and we took them through a tour of the house, walked them through what we wanted to do. They asked questions around things like, you know, when do you want it done by and what color do you want and what kind of you know materials do you want for the cabinets and countertops and all that stuff that we expected. And then all three of those pretty much at the end said, OK, we'll get back to you in a day or two with a quote. So essentially, the sales experience I had with all three of them was identical. Right. You tell us what we want. We'll tell you how much it costs and where it started to divide a little bit is one of the contractors got back same day. One of the contractors got back a week later. One of the contractors we actually never heard from, like they never even sent us a quote. So that was that. Now the fourth guy, James, was the one Nick's family member had worked with. So James came in, did the same thing. We walked him through what we wanted to get done. James sat there. He listened, wrote notes, paid attention to what we were saying. Great active listening, just like all the other guys. But when we were done talking, James said, do you mind if I ask you a question? And we're like, sure, go for it. And he goes, why are you wanting to do these renovations now? And so I jumped in. I was like, well, you know, I had just finished updating my master bedroom at my condo, but I moved in here a couple months ago. And so we really just want to update the place. I had this amazing shower and I was going on and on about the shower and what it was like remodeling that. And so he said, okay, so take me upstairs to the bedroom, the master bedroom and bath. And I want to see kind of the space. So taking him through it. And he's like, okay, now you said you just wanted to kick this wall back a little bit and put a bigger shower in here. Is that because you missed the big shower you had at your old place? I was like, yeah, exactly. And then he looks at me and he's like, would you be open to a different opinion? I go, sure. And then he turns to our master closet and he goes, this should really be your shower. This is like that spa experience that it sounds like you miss so much about your place. And what if instead of kicking this wall out and making this a bigger shower, we actually use this room for a bath and then put your master closet over here in this ugly office that neither of you are using. And so in that moment, I had done all this research. I had gone on Pinterest. Like I was like, I know exactly what I want. I want the shower tile. I want all of this. But he exposed me to the fact that like, I have no business planning a renovation. And he showed me actually how to get what I really wanted instead of just saying, okay, you've done your own research. You know what you want. Let me just tell you how much it's going to cost for me to get that. So in the end, he was actually far more expensive than the other two quotes that we got from the, the like I said, the third one didn't even reply with a quote. He was far more expensive, but the confidence he instilled in us by, by helping us see what we couldn't even see was by and large the, the whole reason I went with him. It was the sales experience that I had with him. Man, so 
let's break that down for a second. First off, Jen, it sounds like you practiced that story hundreds of times. <laughs> was- I tell it all the time. I'm like, sell like James. He's amazing. <laughs> Well, let me first point out the irony that the chief evangelist at Challenger Inc. was challenged by <laughs> her home renovator. So how how did that feel for the little role reversal there, right? Where you're telling them, hey, uh, you know, you're giving them what you want. Hey, this is what I want. And someone says, okay, right? They don't tell you they're they don't tell you you're wrong. They say, are you open to another opinion? So how how, how did that go on your end, right? Because you've done it many times, but I don't know how often it's been done to you. So how did that how did that go? Ah, uh, Alex, it's such a good question. And you're exactly right. Like I love it when it happens to me because it's just like, oh, I know what's happening and I'm I'm along for this ride. The thing that he did that to me d- didn't make it feel aggressive was you you caught on to it. He asked a question right? He was like, help me understand, like, what is even behind your desire to do this? None of the other people did. And by learning, like, what was my underlying belief system? What were my underlying assumptions? It allowed him to understand that if I challenge her, I'm actually challenging her so that she ultimately gets what she wants. I'm not challenging her to be right and show her that she's wrong and she should never be a contractor, though that's absolutely true. I'm challenging her because I know her end game. And, I, and what she thinks she needs to do is not as good as what she actually can do. So it was a really positive experience for me, honestly. Especially when you're in a competitive deal and you're evaluating four vendors and everyone just yeses you to death. And there's that one person that digs deeper because you went in there thinking, hey, I want to extend this piece of my shower in this bathroom Where meanwhile, what you wanted was to replicate your old shower experience, right? And that maybe wasn't necessarily what you wanted in that moment, but he helped you to sort of realize that um, really, really cool. And you ended up going with the most expensive vendor because of that. And the irony is, had we not met James, how we would have made the decision is we would have looked at the first two suppliers that sent us proposals and we would have picked the cheapest one, right? Because it would have been pretty much the same spec. And we just said, all right, well, who can do it cheaper and faster? So that is exactly what we see in B2B. Like when we don't give a different sales experience, we just walk our buyers into picking the cheapest option. That's a perfect segue. So what can what can a B2B seller or a professional seller listening to this right now take away from this and tie it into their process? So two big things. So one is do not get confused around the term customer centricity. I actually hate this term because how we as sellers, how I grew up learning how to sell is you are subservient to the customer and your job is to listen to what they think they need and hand it back to them on a plate. That, as we just discussed, is a great way to be commoditized around price. Now, if you're the lowest cost provider, like, hey, run with it. Like maybe (laughs) maybe that works for you. But most companies are trying to increase profitability right now. So, right. Do not believe that your job is to be subservient to the customer. The belief that we should all have in our heads is, My job is to help the customer get what they want to achieve done. And I do not assume that the customer is always right in their beliefs and assumptions behind it, right? So that's job number one. Um, Two is being unafraid to ask questions that are not questions to, to like qualify someone, which again is how I grew up learning how to sell. Like how much budget do you have? Okay, then this is the answer. If he would have asked me that, We could have never gotten to the solution that he proposed. Instead, what he did is he looked at what I was trying to achieve and actually helped me see that my path to getting there was in some way flawed. So using questions is a really, really safe way to approach that. So you don't come across sounding like a total bonehead and like you're stupid for thinking this is the right answer. So those are the the two big things. And actually, if I add that a third, it's like the sales experience is what absolutely made that decision for me. It wasn't his, you know, resume, it wasn't pictures of his previous job. It was just like, I feel confident James is going to do right by us. And and if we have a question that comes up, he's probably gonna have a better answer than I could have had on my own. We are here for all the Jen Allen takeaways. So if you want to go for a fourth, <laughs> six, Three's um, good. do, do, do definitely continue going. Um, but no, I, I really love this. I think there's a lot of amazing takeaways in this, obviously, And the key thing that I think you said there is that it's not doing so, excuse me, not challenging them to be right. 
you're challenging them to see the situation in which gets them to their result properly, because that's a delicate balance, right? We all have egos. Nobody wants to be told your thinking is wrong, right? You're doing it the wrong way. So there's definitely a delicate balance there. Any sort of tips on how to make sure that you're not challenging someone to insult them, but rather challenging them to make sure that they're ending up with their preferred destination, let's just say. Yes, you said that perfectly. Like I, I want to just record that and share that soundbite with everybody because that's exactly it, right? If you go in trying to show the customer why they're wrong, what you will be met with is an offense-defense dynamic. And in a customer-seller um, offense-defense dynamic, like 99.9% .9 of the time, customer is going to win because for that, for you to win means that the customer has to admit that they're wrong. And just by human nature, we hate doing that. So it's the tone and it is the delivery of how you say what you say that matters. So again, questions, having like allowing that customer to realize themselves that maybe they've got something wrong instead of telling them you're stupid for thinking extending the shower is the right answer. That's a big one. Um, and then it's also taking the under the time to do our prep and understand what is it that the company is trying to achieve. Like the the we are in an embarrassment of riches right now. Like if I compare, not to sound like an old fogey, but like when I first started selling, you know, we didn't have podcasts and we didn't have webinars and we didn't have CEOs going on these things talking about what their company was trying to do and how they were trying to grow. We do now. And so we can come in as sellers with a point of view on what they are trying to achieve and how it looks like they're trying to get there. But the the last thing I will say on it is do not go in stating that stuff as fact. Unless we work within the four walls of that company, it is a hypothesis. And so where we get dinged, where I got dinged a ton when I first tried to do Challenger was going in and being like, you're trying to do this and you're doing it the wrong way. And let me show you the right way. Now it's like, I'll go into a conversation and say, look, I appreciate that you spent the time with me today. And so in advance of this call, I saw that your CEO was talking about this acquisition you made in an effort to do this. But I'm curious, because I couldn't find this, like how, have you ever looked at how this thing over here affects your ability to do this thing that you're trying to do? Help me understand, right? And then again, we go back to human nature. We love to correct, we love to adjust. And so I am much more likely as a customer to lean into that because one, I see the seller is not just showing up and throwing up, but two, they're probably on to something. And if they're not a hundred percent right, that's okay because it makes me feel good as a customer to correct them. So it's like the best of both worlds. So that's my takeaway from that. I don't even want to say anything else on top of that because that was so good. We're going to have to chop that last question and answer up and make it its own thing. <laughs> Uh, but Jen, this has been great. Um, seems like a perfect spot to cut it here. Why don't you go ahead and plug something with the audience? What do you got for us? Yeah. So my passion project is this winning the challenger sale weekly podcast that you mentioned. Um, and the reason for that is I will be the first to throw my hand up and say, I was a relationship builder through and through until I learned how to do challenger learning challenger was not easy for me but it has been the single best thing I have done in my sales career to improve my performance. So what I do on this podcast is I bring in really smart people who sell and think like challengers. And we talk about what things did they mess up? How did they start doing it differently? And it's so tactical and it's candidly, selfishly, all the stuff I wish I would have learned in my first five years of selling. So we have a lot of fun with it. We have some incredible guests. So that would be the one thing I plug. You heard it here, folks. Weekly winning the Challenger Sale podcast with Jen Allen. That is a wrap. We will see you all next week. Jen, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.